And what do you make of Jennings' documentary techniques in this movie? I think he follows the, uh, uh, the rule of, of uh, uh, using uh, quite a lot of stock footage. Uh, I mean, obviously the bombs dropping and so forth is is uh, material shot by cameramen over Germany and uh, other places. Um, and I would suspect also that his Myra Hess and uh, John Gielgud were also shot earlier for Words for Battle uh, and that he just uh, delved into the library and uh, dug those out. Uh, the, the, there is also the possibility that the, uh, uh, the, the clearing of the bombed house was uh, again outtakes from fires were started. Uh, so I mean the, there was a, a trail uh, through earlier films uh, and, and other sources uh, that uh, could be used, but the greater part of it, I am sure, was shot specially for Diary for Timothy, and they obviously started out. Again, I say obviously. I mean, uh, it, it seems apparent to me that they started out with this as their basic idea, a diary for a boy born on the third of September, nineteen forty-four. Uh, and carrying through to Christmas. They obviously couldn't have known what was going to happen, but that this was uh, at least a viable question to ask. How will the world look to this baby uh, when he grows to the years of, uh, uh, of at least inquiring what it was like when he was born? Uh, and answering that. It, it sounds to me a very typical Humphrey Jennings type of concept and I think that he kept a fairly tight grip. Uh, quite what contribution E.M. Forster made when he was shown the film, uh, how much he suggested and how much he followed Humphrey Jennings suggestions, uh, we can never know. But I suspect that uh, Jennings was the, uh, the, the prime architect of both the visuals and the uh, the narration, uh, even though uh, they did get a very top actor in uh, Michael Redgrave uh, to do the actual narration for them.